Welcome back. All right, so continuing our series looking at uh, people who've had trophies named after them in the National Hockey League, we are now at Frank Calder. Uh, by today's standards, Frank Calder, pretty obscure figure for most. I think, I think most hockey fans might have a passing knowledge of who he was. But he was the first president of the National Hockey League in 1917, meaning that at a time of great turbulence, he was the guy in charge of trying to get things settled down. Uh, the National Hockey League was limping its way around in 1917. wasn't really a certainty that this league was going to survive, but there was enough... Um, there was enough money behind it to make it work, and there was enough uh, ruthlessness to make it work. In order to become number one, there has to be a level of ruthlessness to all of that. Um, when it comes to pro leagues, we've seen that with various sports when they're starting out. With the NHL, uh, the first year you start with a Montreal Wanderers home game that attracts 700 fans. Then the building burnt down. Not long after that, the Wanderers haven't been heard from since. Uh, there hasn't been like a Wanderers throwback that I've ever seen, but I'm here for it if that ever happens. So at any rate, and I don't have a Wanderers jersey, I'm not that old. Uh, he was the first president, and he's, he was there until the day he died, 1943. Uh, he did survive an overthrow attempt in 1932, uh, which was set upon by the Chicago Blackhawks owner. It was unsuccessful. Uh, it was rejected by the Board of Governors. So he died, uh, basically he had a heart attack during a Board of Governors meeting in 1943, goes to the hospital, has another, goes home about a week later and has another, and that third one would prove to be fatal. So after that, uh, the NHL does name a new president, and we will go through who the presidents have been in the National Hockey League, because it's fascinating to see how they conduct business. But he had been the secretary treasurer for the NHA, the National Hockey Association, which we would still be talking about. We wouldn't have an NHL if not for their absolute, pure, severe, complete, total, unadulterated hatred for Eddie Livingstone. Yeah, I had wondered when I started doing these videos, looking back this far, if Eddie Livingstone would come up. And he does, and in glorious fashion. So for Eddie Livingstone people on the channel, and there are people who are like, oh, he's talking about Eddie Livingstone. Yep, go ahead, pause the video, get yourself a drink, and uh, pull up the Lazy Boy if you have one, and, and just put your feet up. Uh, so his Hall of Fame induction would happen in 1947. One confusion that people have is they'll think that the Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame is a National Hockey League entity. And it's not. It's its own. Uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame is the Hockey Hall of Fame, not the NHL Hall of Fame. Um, and, and honestly, I think that when the Hockey Hall of Fame decided to name Bettman, I would imagine that Bettman had reservations quietly to himself as well. Um, and, and so Frank Calder gets named to the Hockey Hall of Fame as a builder, because he really did help build this league up. Between 1917 and 1943, things changed dramatically. Expansion, contraction, a lot of upheaval, franchises moving, and whatnot. Now, we know that the Calder Trophy is named after him for Rookie of the Year. Also, the American Hockey League's Calder Cup is named after him as well. So, he's got a couple of trophies with his name on him. Uh, now, he was ruthless in that the Hamilton Tigers, I'm wearing a Hamilton Bulldogs jersey, which is inspired by the NHL look that Hamilton had way back in the day, uh, the Hamilton Tigers went on strike. They felt things weren't fair for them, and so he refused to negotiate. Uh, they wanted to negotiate, he said no, and he imposed a $200 fine on each player. Now, for inflation purposes, I did calculate it. That comes out to $3,391.97 today. Now, people would say, well, that's nothing to an NHL player. Oh, now it wouldn't be. But back in the 1920s, yeah, I would say that kind of a fine was major. So that puts an end to that. I could talk about the Hamilton Tigers strike another day because there are some interesting things that went on about 100 years ago in the NHL. Uh, now, he agreed to cooperate with the AHA. There were other pro leagues that were sprouting up. And the NHL's job was a simple one. Be nice to them, be friendly with them, and then do your best to put them out of their misery and get rid of them and become the number one league. And the AHA, this kind of happens again. So... All right, he's agreeing to work with the AHA, and then uh, what's this? The Chicago Cardinals. Who's the owner? Eddie Livingstone. How interesting. It couldn't be. It's him. It's the same guy. All right, I'd love to work with the AHA, but uh, we got a problem with the Chicago Cardinals. So what he did was he starts taking players off the Cardinals, giving the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, clearly these are Blackhawks. Giving them to other teams in the league as well. So now you're 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 making it so this team can't put a a franchise or like a roster on the ace this is not like the nhl now you didn't have you know 50 guys under contract you might have only had 10 so 
he really makes it so that Livingstone eventually is just forced out. Um, and, and Livingstone would go to amateur hockey, got tired of even trying the professional hockey route. The, the guy just wanted to make some money, and uh, the NHL said, no, absolutely not. Whatever Livingstone did, they stopped it. Now, what's even worse is this. So the AHA goes, all right, Livingstone's out. Uh, we would like to challenge for the Stanley Cup. And Frank Calder declared it an outlaw league. But what he did was uh, that there was an owner of the Chicago Shamrocks uh, named James Norris. And if you're like, oh, isn't James Norris the one that, isn't he the guy that's on the trophy for the defenseman? Yes, it is. Same man. And uh, he was brought in to help out the Detroit Cougars. Uh, the Detroit Cougars had moved from Victoria and things weren't going very well. So Norris takes over in Detroit and changes the team's name to Red Wings. So uh, James Norris was taken out of the league. Might have been the best uh, deep-pocketed owner that they had in the AHA. But basically the NHL went in, took what they wanted, ruined Eddie Livingstone's life, and then walked out. And so this is... You know, I can imagine if, if that had happened during a time of a lot of media attention and the NHL being as big as it is now, and especially if it was another pro league, eh, there'd be some opinions on that. Uh, now, one thing for Frank Calder is that uh, he was adamant that minorities would be allowed into the National Hockey League, that there would be no law barring um, minorities from playing. And that was, that was in direct uh, opposition to what baseball's opinion was at the time. Uh, there were black hockey teams that were cropping up, and he basically said, yeah, if they're good enough, they can play in the NHL. Uh, now, owners, individual owners in the NHL, did have a different opinion on that, and that was something that stayed that way for a long time. Uh, it, it's it, it's definitely something that stayed there for, for quite some time with the National Hockey League, but not from Frank Calder. Um, publicly, he was adamant that, that there would be no line, wasn't going to happen. There wasn't going to be any kind of segregation out of the NHL. Uh, now, he was inducted into Canada Sports Hall of Fame in 2015. And I, I think, honestly, you know, I, I mean, there's some ruthlessness there. But that's kind of how that works, right? Uh, the NHL came in as a, a fledgling league, uh, the remnants of the NHA. And Calder helped to build it up to what it became. Uh, you know, you get into the modern era and all the rule changes and a lot of the things about the way the game looks and feels now, a lot of that would have happened under Calder's watch. And as the president, I mean, he had he would have had final say in a lot of things. There's a board of governors to hold him, hold him accountable. And as I said, there was one attempt to oust him, and it, it just didn't go anywhere. My guess is it would have been the same as things are now with Bettman. Uh, as long as the money's coming in and as long as, you know, financially everything's going well, why change things? Uh, Frank Calder, uh, will his name remain on the trophy that he bought and donated to the NHL? Maybe. Uh, I don't ever see the Calder Cup at the AHL level changing its name. Uh, but there is that possibility that the trophy changes names in the National Hockey League. But hey, I wanted to do a video on Frank Calder. And yeah, James Norris needs to have a video as well. I've talked about that for years. Um, Norris is, is someone who really helped save hockey in Detroit. Uh, long before there was a Steve Eiserman, long before Gordie Howe was a star player in the National Hockey League as well. So, there's Frank Calder. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.